Hey, it's pre-patch time, so let's get right into it with all that you can expect. First up, we've got dates. Pre-patch has got two phases, of course, phase one, October 25th, phase two, November 15th, which is two weeks before Dragonflight commences. Phase one is including the new talent system for all existing classes, the UUI overhaul, a whole bunch of systemic changes that I'll get into today as well, while phase two contains the actual meat of the Drakthia Revoker race and class for those who pre-ordered, primal invasion world content, and a new dungeon, Uldaman Legacy of Tyr. All of this is tied together with a short quest line that will advance the plot towards Dragonflight, and the Drakthia intro itself will have some cinematics and things for us, so perhaps some juicy lore. But uh, again, yeah, the track theory, those are only for the people who have pre-ordered. What's that? Oh, look, it's a segue to today's sponsor. Squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. Now, here's the deal, of course. Our game, The Pale Beyond, is coming out very soon. And I mean, we, we have a few neat ideas. I want to do a vinyl release. I want to make a physical art book. Now, here's what's awesome. Squarespace's e-commerce features are unbelievably simple. And what's really awesome, they actually automatically hook in to the fulfillment center that we use for our Patreon merch. So when the time comes, I just need to make the listing on Squarespace, which is real easy. I then hook it up to the fulfillment center and that's it. It's just done, it works. I mean, that's how slick it is. And as a small business owner, being able to have all of these things in one place, because if you're also an SMB like, man, you have to wear so many hats. So having a partner like Squarespace make all of these things really be easy and handle these things is just great. And they do more too. I mean, mailing lists, that's brilliant. <laughs> We've got one. And they just make my life easier by solving the problem and doing so with style because their award-winning templates are the perfect way to start, ensuring that even if you're not a designer or a web developer, you can get a fantastic, professional performance that works on all different devices. Great website. So be it your personal page, your work portfolio, your CV, a side hustle. Squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. Head there the perfect place to establish your web presence and Code Bellular Gaming gets you 10% off an annual plan. The new UI then. Okay, so pre-patch brings with it the overhauled UI, and this is just awesome. So the first thing you'll notice is a fresh settings menu complete with a new search function. So that's kind of neat. Here you're going to find a few new ways to control the game, including action targeting, the interact button, press to hold key binds for repeat casts, and a bunch of other things. Action bars are also overhauled, now having eight, and working along with the new UI framework that allows for elements to be moved, scaled, and customized. And that's with all the non-primary action bars having combat-based visibility settings as well. And all of this can be positioned and snapped to a scalable grid. You're also going to find the new combined bag, along with some nice visual tweaks, most notably the uh, honestly quite fantastic looking new player and target frames, which uh, are far more clean. You'll be able to save UI setups, export them to your friends, and import ones too. Now, this also includes the significantly better buff and debuff functionality, which is movable. So, while add-ons won't be wholly replaced for many, you might feel like you just don't need add-ons as much. And supposedly Blizzard's visual design in the future raid is a bit tighter, so who knows? Maybe you won't even feel like you need as many raid add-ons. Talents then, pre-patch phase one brings the new talent system. This is a massive overhaul that is designed to replace expansion-based borrow power, which we've had decently recently for the last few expansions, and it lays down a new foundation for the game moving forward. As such, expect to see familiar traits from some artifact traits, some legendary things uh, feature within the new talents, as well as a few new abilities, some tweaks to uh, some specs, and uh, in a few cases, like with the druids and the disc priests, actually really fairly sizable changes. Now, each spec has a suggested starter build, and you can save many builds per spec, now being able to swap between builds and edit builds at will. Uh, yes, there's no longer a need for Tomes of the Clear Mind, uh, or for you to be in a rested area. You can just change your talents whenever you want. 
which is a massive quality of life upgrade. The trees are also searchable, and if you click in the search bar, you actually get a pop-up that highlights any talented abilities that you've not actually bound to your bars, which is a really nice quality of life feature for the newer players. There's also, like with the UI, the option to import and to export talents, plus you can even make it so that your action bars change with your currently active talent build. They've been doing great work here. As for changes themselves, look, I'd be lying if I said that everything was perfect. Some classes do have a few outstanding issues. One thing, paladins, some of them feel a little bit hard done by. There's a few other examples there as well. But uh, there also are many fantastic changes like the feral druids and balanced druids. And many classes are, I'd say, progressing in a pretty positive direction compared to Shadowlands. Most importantly, this gets us out of the borrowed power trap, and with this being a generally large change, Blizzard have said they are open to continued design iteration as the Dragonflight patches roll on. This is a bit touch and go on the PTR, but all being well, the rebalancing of leveling XP should be there for the pre-patch. Here is a graph. They've essentially murdered levels 50 through 60, and uh, with 50 to 60, of course, being part of Chromie time, you won't have to do them in the bloody Shadowlands, which is good news. So this is the perfect time to level up new characters, but a bit of a word of caution, because if you do pre-order the expansion, say to get a Dracthea or something, you'll get a level boost with that. Use that boost with care. Boosted allied races do not unlock heritage armor. Uh, so to get the Arch Armor, you need to level them up to 50 manually. So if you're leveling multiple tunes and you do have a boost, use your boost in a non-allied race and uh, level the allied races manually. As usual, Warlords of Draenor is still the fastest way for you to get your initial leveling done. Um, we might do an updated video, but uh, there is this one that we did two years ago, which still does apply. Another neat thing as well, many people expected the 50% XP buff to go away with pre-patch, but per the specific wording, it actually goes away when the Drakthi Revoker becomes playable, which is phase two of pre-patch, and that does mean the 50% XP buff will be active for a bit more time yet. Okay, next I'm going to cover other things that are coming in phase one of pre-patch. So, Priest, Mage, and Rogue are now available to all existing races, obviously with the exception of the new Drakthir, who can only be evokers. At least for now, I saw some data mining hints that maybe could be a glimmer of hope there, but uh, yeah, for now, that's not going to be the case. Another great change that will come with pre-patch phase one is the further liberalization of mob tagging rules, which uh, still are up to five players, but importantly, they're now cross-faction. So if you're an alliance player and some horde bastard attacks your mob, do not worry, it will actually count as progress for both of you and you'll both be able to loot it. This all makes sense, of course, given Blizzard's introduction of cross-faction gameplay in 9.2.5, and that's a change that, if you've not experienced it, is noteworthy where they may be more than you would think. Matt and I hopped back into Mythic Plus Dungeons like two months ago, and we were kind of blown away by how many more groups there were. You see, we're Alliance, Alliance is previously a lot smaller in that type of content, and we just found the amount of groups we had access to was humongous. So while that's not a change of pre-patch, it is a fantastic one that many people will only now be experiencing for the first time. The new Res Sickness rules will also be activated, where instead of a 25% durability hit and 10 minute stat debuff, you'll now just get a 1 minute stat debuff and a 50% durability hit. So it is more punishing in a way, but it lets you get back in the action a bit more quickly, with Blizzard saying that the old penalty... Yeah, just had people log out, so the change makes sense. Shadowlands is not quite dead yet with pre-patch, so all three raids will be faded at the same time. Second, group loot, the new loot system, will apply in all of those raids, meaning that right now marks the end of personal loot in World of Warcraft raiding. The new group loot system that's coming into the game is based on the familiar need greed role system that we had been used to in the game's past, but it's got extremely important upgrades, uh, so pay attention to this, especially if you're suspicious or worried about this change. So, the game is aware of main spec and off spec, so if two people roll need, one person, you know, the item is not for their loot spec, but the item is for another person's loot spec, well, the person who's rolling for their main spec will take priority. That's massive. 
There are a bunch of other very common sense additions as well, and that all just amounts to it being a fairly foolproof system that does bring back many old positives while cutting out negatives. And for many dedicated groups of friends who play together, like what I do, it's a godsend because loot trading restrictions as a part of the system are gone. And this allows guilds to distribute loot however they want, but only in an opt-in basis, because of course, Master Loot will not return. And if you want to give Shadowlands a last hurrah, you'll still be able to earn the Keystone Master Mount, as well as the uh, the plus 20 stuff for Mythic Plus. Also, Sylvanas and Zoval's Mythic Mounts will still have their 100% drop rate of two mounts, with Zoval Heroic still having his mount available. And, of course, the Slime Cat, which is from clearing all Fated Raids in Normal Mode and above, uh, that is also available, with all three raids being Fated at once. So, it's a pretty good opportunity then to take your new class out and actually give, uh, give those class changes a spin. Now, do note that uh, a bunch of effects will be disabled, actually, you know, like your, your Legos and stuff. This is actually something that makes sense, because they would combine with the talent revamp in a way that would essentially just break classes. But don't worry, because Blizzard will be tuning the content to make up for this loss of power. Another fantastic change that you may especially enjoy if you're trying to, well, see how your class actually feels, is that Rated Solo Shuffle is a thing now. Of course, it was a brawl, but with Rated and uh, it being cross-faction, which is coming too, it means that earning Conquest via Solo Queue PvP will finally be a pillar of World of Warcraft gameplay. This is just fantastic, but hey Blizz, Let's get solo roll queue made for Rated Battlegrounds. Do that, and we'll be golden. That's not all for Phase 1, there are a few other miscellaneous changes. So, if you'd like to earn a Dragon Isles mount right now, good news. Pre-patch does add the 500 mount achievement, which rewards the otherworldly Otuk. They've also added a host of pet collection ones. Uh, 1250, 1500, 1700, and 2000 pets each have an achievement, which rewards a pet. That is a lot of pets. Also, the barbershop is totally free, campaign quest NPCs get a special mouse over, and uh, the enhanced gameplay support for uh, gamepads is in. I would of course recommend using the console port add-on for that though. Phase 2 then, so the Drakthir unlock November 15th, and being a hero class, they start at level 58, hitting level 60 by the end of their starting zone, meaning you'll rapidly have a new level capped character ready to go straight into the new dungeon and world event. The starting zone for them is actually great, but to make a Drakthir, you will need to have one character at level 50 or above on whatever server you're using uh, is, but of course, with uh, the XP stuff that we've talked about before, getting a fresh tune to level 50 would be very, very easy. Now, you're only allowed one Drakthir per realm as well. Okay, let's talk about the event. The pre-patch event honestly is uh, very simple this time round. So it involves the elemental invasions of four zones, Ungoro, Northern Barrens, Tirasfall, and the Badlands, and you can see this just viewable on your world map. These are essentially a bit of a Dragonflight endgame thing backported, uh, so I guess they just kind of turn it around sort of quickly. Now when an invasion is active, there'll be loads of trash mobs. Uh, they essentially don't matter. Uh, they matter every 30 minutes when the Elemental Lord appears. The Lord has a shield. To destroy the shield, you will have to defeat 100 of the nearby empowered mobs. Now, when empowered by the Lord, these mobs will drop Primeval Essence. This is the event currency. Uh, with the shield down, you can just kill the Lord. Uh, doing so will get you loot, and it will get you more currency. It's simple enough, really, and it is a fairly conservative event. It's uh, certainly not reaching the heights of the Legion pre-patch event. But still, you do actually get some neat rewards where there are item level 252 gear sets for each armor type, and uh, they may actually be of interest uh, to you for transmog purposes. I think certainly the plate set is looking particularly good. Beyond that then, the uh, Elemental Lords have got a chance to drop an item. If you combine all four of those, you'll be able to make a new heirloom trinket, and there is also a toy. Overall then, it's a simple enough event, which is honestly a bit disappointing, but there is at least the new dungeon, Uldaman Legacy of Tyr. Now this is one of the new eight Dragonflight dungeons, but with this level 60 tuned version that you can play now, which will be a nice way to again test out your new talents. 
Now what's interesting here is how Mythic Plus works because season one of Dragonflight has four Dragonflight dungeons and four older dungeons. Season two then has the other four Dragonflight dungeons and four other older dungeons and Ulderman will be a part of season two. So I suppose don't really worry about burning yourself out by doing Ulderman right now because you won't be able to do it in Mythic Plus until season two of this expansion. But of course it will be available at Mythic Zero at level 70. So there you go. That, everybody, is the pre-patch event. And that's the video. I didn't write an outro, so uh, here we are. You made it to the end. Congratulations. If you'd like to support what we're doing, well, of course, you could always check out The Pale Beyond, which is the video game that we're developing. And that's, uh, yeah, well, it's coming soon. And uh, you can check it out over on Steam if you are down for a uh, narrative uh, RPG, a sort of survival-themed uh, Antarctic exploration-inspired game. It's been testing real awesomely with the demo, by the way, which has been very nice to see. Okay, that's it for me. Goodbye.